When Viego was first revealed, Riot very quickly transitioned away from revealing additional Viego support, but it's not because they don't like the spooky boy. It's just because the very next day they revealed action, and then after action, we got what I affectionately call the after action report, in which case we got followers and more archetype stuff for him. So we are circling back with today's reveals. We got two cards. I think both of these are either intended for Viego or at least the Viego theme as far as the spooky invading army goes. We're going to talk about Withering Mist first. Withering Mist here is a five cost slow spell that very simply says drain two from two enemies. And it would be very easy to look at this and say this is bad or this is boring. But there are some interesting points to bring up. So I do want to cover them. I also feel like I've said this a lot as far as these reveals go that this is a card that is probably not very good but has either the potential to be good with future support or is at least better than it looks I feel like for this upcoming I don't know if it's called the Sentinels event the Ruination event what I have you uh this upcoming event I feel like I've said the words uh it's probably not good but it's better than it looks sort of thing a lot Withering Mist definitely fits there so Withering Mist is a five cost slow spell drain two from two enemies that naturally feels bad because you're going to compare it to other in region five cost spells specifically withering whale where you are dealing one to the entire enemy board and you always heal a flat three or grasp where you are draining three from a single target and both of those fill different roles with whale you're targeting go wide decks and so hitting the entire board feels really good and with grasp you're probably either more emphasizing healing or single target options in which case doing more to a single target matters also those are fast speed and this is slow speed so this feels even more awkward until you factor in potential synergy and this stood out to me because i am somebody who loves to play what i call dreadros this is dreadway ledros keg control this card i think would replace grasp for me in my list because with a single keg on the board the down tick in speed meaning going from fast to slow is worth it if I can double the effect so with a single keg on the board grasp would traditionally drain something for four but in this case a single keg would make you drain three from two enemies and if you're running grasp you are kind of already accepting that getting that baseline of three is usually okay and sometimes the kegs are a nice add-on but I think with mist you're saying okay I'm willing to take the risk that I'm going to have a keg and then this will become my new grasp but I get it twice it just doubles and that is very very good when it happens because you double the effect which is obvious but you also double the healing usually if you're running grasp it's also because you really care about healing and that's the other nice thing about this this as a baseline should be healing you for four I say should be because you do still have to hit two targets to actually get that full healing effect but if you're running grasp it's because you want to kill something and heal for three this you're at a baseline healing for four and with a single keg you're now up to six multiple kegs could be like eight with dreadway on the board this could become pay five to deal four to two units and then also heal for eight because again that's just the way drain works and so it loves amplification effects this is also a card that could theoretically work really nicely with unsmith if you don't want to go with the bilge water route i have not seen much shadow isles like piltover and zon control in quite some time even after the heimer buff it's just not something that i have seen but maybe this would belong in a deck like that if you're running fun smith at a minimum withering mist should be on your radar because it benefits so nicely from the damage amplification and those are basically the only times you should be considering running this in all likelihood I will also say that two is kind of a nice magic number there are certainly some decks that kind of take advantage of going over top of withering whale we've seen a rise in zed being played lately for example lurk certainly doesn't have many things with one health but they've got a lot more with two health and so withering mist could theoretically be okay there i don't know if it's good enough but there are some instances or i guess i should say some metas where mist actually still could be better than whale and now actually might be one of them so i'm personally excited for mist just because i want to play it in that dreadway ledros keg control style of deck 
but I also understand why people look at it and say, you know, probably not good enough because in most cases they're right. Again, you've really got to either care about the healing or find a way to take advantage of the fact that this is uh, damage but split and do so in an elegant manner. Otherwise, you'd just be better off running either whale or grasp. So that's it for mist. We're going to move on now to invasive hydrovine this is a seven cost seven six with fearsome yeah i know my head's covering the six but you're gonna have to trust me it's a seven six it's got that fearsome keyword and it says when i'm summoned or round start summon an encroaching mist and i really like this card for the viego art type if you're gonna go heavy on the mist because it's got that summon so i'm already excited to abuse it with somebody like Callista because again every time i see summon effect i think of her but also she legitimately, I think, fits the Viego archetype. She was already really good in Mist Race to begin with, and now we've got a new type of Mist that we can abuse. Functions very similarly, so I love all the tie-ins. But I really like this as well because it is when I'm summoned or round start. So this can serve as another battery, if you will, for slowly but surely buffing your Mists which in turn also buffs your Viego because you have to remember the encroaching mist every time that those things are summoned. They buff all other encroaching mists, but also all of your allied Viegos by plus one plus one. So this makes Viego get bigger every round while also making the mists get bigger. And the mists getting bigger is relevant because that's one of the better ways to level up Viego. So it all feeds into itself. This card is also potentially great for something like Harrowing. I've mentioned in the past, I think Viego might really enjoy harrowing because it's going to be one of the easiest ways to kind of level him up all in one go but i think that the invasive hydrovine here also could be a solid way to do it as well the interesting thing is that once you get to the late game there's a lot of great ways to level up viego i had mentioned i think in his reveal video something like spectral matron is also really good with scythria because you're making some massive bodies basically get you halfway to leveling Viego all on its own but if you don't want to pair with Demacia you can try jamming in some other options including this Hydrovine so I know that Hydrovine costs seven Matron costs eight so if you're playing things on curve it doesn't really line up but being able to Matron a Hydrovine which also then makes a mist at the end of that round you're going to have the Hydrovine die and the mist die because they're ephemeral if they're summoned from the Matron there that's in and of itself likely going to be more than half at that stage of the game of your level up condition for a Viego. So I like this card for Viego lists. I think that, you know, stat wise, it's not a ton to write home about, but once you get really, once you get to six mana, everything after that is more about the effect than the actual stats. I think at six, it's pretty relevant because that's when a lot of mid-range decks are usually like playing a six drop that's intended to be either a closer or something to generate a lot of pressure. And so if you can either block those and get value trades or, or do things with that, that matters, right? You're talking about the difference between a Scythria and a Hecarim and an Alpha Wild Claw on six, and there's pros and cons to all of them. But after six the size of your unit is kind of arbitrary after six you're spending so much mana on a single source it had better just have an effect that you really want um likely you're building your deck around it so i think about like leviathan with swain ledros what have you dreadway right i think hydrovine is fine at a seven six it's certainly threatening the fact that it still has fearsome is very relevant but also I think that in a Viego deck, this is a powerful enough effect to consider running it. I don't know if it's going to be a three of or not. I think that's going to depend on deck building, but this is, I think, going to belong in Viego lists for the most part, especially the mist centric ones. So that's it for the reveals today. We got a mist and then we got a mist generator, which I think is both interesting and confusing because we have mist wraiths. And we have encroaching mists and now we have withering mist and <laughs> that's not the same as the other mists and i'm probably missing some other mist references so you will call those mist references and at this point i'm just having a lot of fun with it but 
that's it for the video so if you made it this far and you've put up with all of my shenanigans you are a saint thank you i appreciate you and until next time may you walk on warm sands